Previously, we looked, looked at the working capital ratio and said it's a vital ratio because it tells us whether we can meet our short-term debts as they fall due. So one of the things we looked at was which business would you rather be? So both businesses here, business A and B, had assets of 100 and liabilities of 70, but we can't tell anything from that. They seem to be identical at this point. So we classify assets and liabilities into current and non-current. So based on that, we can see both businesses are actually the same. They both have current assets of 60. And their liabilities are actually the same as well. They've got current liabilities of 60. So in this case, looking at the working capital ratio, we calculate current assets of 60,000 divided by current liabilities of 30,000. That's a ratio of 2.0 for business A. And also for business B, that's a ratio of 2.0. So based on the one liquidity ratio we've learned so far, these businesses are equal. Um, the problem with the working capital ratio is it's very good. It just sort of paints with a very sort of uh, broad brush. What we'd like to do is delve a little bit deeper and get into some detail. So for example, let's look at the actual balance sheet makeup for each of these businesses. So let's have a look. We know the current liabilities have got to be paid with cash. So let's have a look. Let's say their current liabilities are the same. They both have creditors, GST and accrued wages for the exact same amount, but their current assets are a little bit different. So the cash for business A is 20,000, for business B it's only five. Debt is for business A is 25, but for business B it's only 5,000. Stock, business A has 10,000, but business B has 40,000. And prepaid rent for business A is 5,000, but for business B it's 10,000. So based on that, which business would you rather be? Well, it all comes down to which are the easiest current assets to convert into cash. So obviously cash, well that doesn't make any sense, it already is cash. So that's probably the best asset that we can ever have to pay our bills. Debtors are a good asset to have to turn into cash because we've got a legal right to get the money from someone. And depending on the industry we're in, usually debtors pay you know, quite quickly if they want to do business with us again. So they're a good one to turn into cash. Stock is problematic though. If stock could be turned into cash so easily, um, everybody would be selling it and we'd all be doing fantastically well. Clearly it's difficult to sell stock. That's the challenge of business. So that's a little harder to convert into cash. And any prepaid assets such as rent, well, that's kind of silly because it is a current asset, but it's going to be difficult to get it into cash. So let's just go back to stock for a second, say it's very difficult to sell it and then collect the money. So why don't we exclude that from our working capital ratio and get rid of it? Now, the prepaid rent, that'll actually never become cash. It's definitely an asset. It's going to provide future economic benefits. We can rent the property, but I can't pay anybody with that. If anybody wants a current liability paid, such as a creditor or maybe the government's GST, I can't pay them with my prepaid rent. So that's kind of useless for paying our current liabilities. So what I'll do is get rid of that from my uh, working capital ratio as well. So what I'm left with is cash and debtors. So based on that, it's quite easy to see. I'd much rather be business A. Between cash and debtors, it's got $45,000, but business B only has 10,000. This all comes down to what's called the quick asset ratio, which is basically the working capital ratio. So you can see on the screen, it says current assets divided by current liabilities, which is actually the working capital ratio. But we just sort of paint with a finer brush. And what we do is out of current assets, we get rid of stock and we get rid of any prepaid expenses. Underneath for current liabilities, we'll get rid of any bank overdrafts that we have. And to do that, we can see that for business A, if we get rid of the stock and the prepaid rent, which is 15,000 in total from 60, we end up with 45,000. And underneath, we don't have a, uh, under the current liabilities, we don't have a bank overdraft. So that'll stay at 30,000. And we'll end up with a ratio of 1.5 to one. Looking at a more detailed example, so one that actually does have a bank overdraft. So let's say this is ABC Industries. We're going to take its current assets of 50,000 minus away the stock and the prepaid rent of 20 and 12. That equals 18,000 in total between debtors and GST. And underneath, we'll actually take the current liabilities of 20. We'll get rid of the bank overdraft of four, and that'll be 16,000. And in this case, it's a bit uh, tighter. It's actually only a ratio of 1.13 to 1. So what does that mean, 1.13 to 1? It means for every dollar of urgent current liabilities, so creditors control and accrued wages there in this case, the firm has $1.13 in quick assets to pay them. So we use that term quick assets and not current assets. So this word here is very important. We're gonna use quick assets and that would only be debtors, 
uh, and his GST the government owes us because we know that um, we're legally going to get that and we get it within 90 days. We'd also have cash if we had it there. And we also say urgent current liabilities, not current liabilities, just the urgent ones. So what we'll do in this case is get rid of the bank overdraft and just say that includes creditors control and then accrued wages. So basically the way to look at this is to say for every dollar of urgent items on the liability side, we've got $1.13 in quick assets on the current asset side. So based on that, if we calculate the quick asset ratios to the two examples we started with at the start, we had business A, current assets of 60, stock, let's get rid of that of 10, prepaid rent of 5, and for the current liabilities we had 30,000. We didn't have a bank overdraft, so what we'll end up with is 45 divided by 30 is 1.5 to 1. But for business B, we can see that we're actually going to take the current assets of 60. They have most of their current assets in stock, so that's 40,000. That's quite common for a retailer. So maybe this is a business like Meyer, which has a lot of its uh, assets tied up in stock. Also get rid of the prepaid rent of 10. That only leaves um, on the underneath we've got $30,000 of current liabilities, but on the top that only leaves uh, $10,000 of current assets in the form of cash and debtors. They've got to be used to pay $30,000 of current liabilities, which is a ratio of 0.33 to 1. So that's a really bad ratio. We just don't have enough uh, quick assets to pay our really urgent current liabilities. So the working capital is good because it does look at the short-term liquidity of the business over the next 12 months. Quick asset ratio is a little bit better though because we're going to exclude some of the less urgent items. So we'll get rid of stock and say it's not very liquid, it's uh, difficult to sell and then maybe we even sell on credit and have to follow up and get the money from a debtor. So we'll get rid of that from our current assets. We'll also get rid of prepayments because they're not liquid items, they will never ever become cash, we can never pay a bill with them. Underneath the bank overdraft, we'll say that's not an urgent current liability. Bank uh, money's going to our bank account each and every day. So whilst we might have an overdraft today, the bank usually doesn't put up a fuss because they know there's money going in there all the time, and it'll probably soon be out of uh, overdraft. So we exclude that one from our current liabilities. Looking at the trend, if it went from 1.13 to 1, that uh, so that was the example we used. If it went down to 0.90 to 1, that means for every dollar of urgent liabilities, we now only have 90 cents in quick assets. We're actually 10 cents short. Liquidity has decreased, and we have fewer quick assets to pay urgent liabilities. If that ratio went up to 2.05, that's a good trend. For every dollar of urgent liabilities, we've now got $2.05 of quick assets, and we'd say that is a good trend, and our liquidity has increased.